Welcome to another TwinCAD tutorial from ControlX. The topic of today's tutorial is measurement projects in TwinCAD. Specifically, we'll be looking into TwinCAD scope projects, which is the charting and data recording tool for TwinCAD and allows variables in the PLC to be recorded and displayed graphically. We will learn about the various types of scope projects and how to add one to your TwinCAD project. A single scope project can contain multiple charts, so we will learn how to create charts, add appropriate axes, and record your PLC variables. Finally, we will see the options for saving and exporting the recorded data. At the end of today's tutorial, you will be able to work with scope projects to display and record PLC variables in real time and graphically view how your process variables are changing. So let's get started. Let's begin with introductions first. TwinCAD measurement can be thought of as a global container that can host one or more types of measurement projects. The measurement projects can be of any of these types, but for this tutorial, our focus will be on scope projects. TwinCAD scope is used for charting and recording PLC variables. It is thus an indispensable tool, not only for machine commissioning, but also for process monitoring. A scope comes with some quite useful functionality like cursor tools and trigger functions, which we'll explore in the live demo portion of today's tutorial. As a software, TwinCAD Scope consists of two products, Scope View, which is the TwinCAD engineering product and supplies the graphical interface for the configuration of recordings and displaying the signals being recorded. Scope View is available in different product levels and is licensed for the device on which it is displayed. The Scope Server, on the other hand, is a TwinCAD function and provides the software for data logging. The server sends the recorded data to Scope View. There's also a light version of Scope called Scope Base, which contains a license-free scope view and server components. Uh, this free version is installed together with the TwinCAD 3 XAE. So if you have the XAE installed, you should have the scope base included. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be working with the free version. For full product details about TwinCAD scope, please visit back of Infosys website and navigate to the page shown on the screen. Here you will also find the complete product comparison between the features of both this base and license versions of TwinCAD scope. As I mentioned earlier, the base version of Scope is free of charge and is already included with your installation of TwinCAD XAE. To add a measurement project to our existing solution, uh, navigate to the File menu, click Add, and then New Project. In the pop-up window, navigate to TwinCAD Measurement and select Scope. You will be presented with the various Scope project options. Let's do a quick overview of the various Scope project types. One of the most commonly used scope type is the YT chart. This is the classic time-based scope, uh, which plots some variable on the vertical y-axis with respect to time on the horizontal x-axis. An XY scope plots two variables against each other, one variable for each of the two axes. An array bar chart is a visual representation of your data using rectangular bars with their values represented along the y-axis. The digital chart scope is used to visually show data variables in an LCD style display with variable refresh rates, colors, sizes, etc. An XYZ chart enables three dimensional representation of signals in TwinCAD scope by combining three data series into one channel. The XYZ chart can be moved while holding down the left mouse button, which allows rotation of the plot around the central point when the mouse is moved. So, that was a quick overview of some of the common scope types. For this tutorial, we will create a time-based scope, so select YT scope project. By default, the measurement project will be added to its own subfolder within your current solution. If you wish to change the name or location, you can do it from here. Click OK to proceed adding the scope project to the solution. The scope project gets added to the solution as a separate project and can be seen in the solution explorer as shown. Multiple measurement projects can be added as required. This is the scope view area. This is where all the recorded variables are displayed on their own axes. Uh, there can be multiple axes within the same chart with the same variables shown on the same axis. For example, we could have an axis for temperature and another axis representing pressure measurements. The properties window is a dynamic container which shows the properties of the selected item in the project. For example, if the YT chart is selected, then it shows properties like behavior, color, zoom settings, etc. If an axis is selected, then it shows properties like axis title, color, line width, axis min max, grid properties, grid division subgrids, etc. The toolbox has no usable controls in scope project. With this introduction, let's hop onto TwinCAD and play with scope measurement project. We are in TwinCAD and I have my training PLC project open. So we'll start by adding the measurement project. So we go to file, add, 
new project. This lists all the types of various um, twin cat measurement projects. There is analytical, body plot, filter designer. We are interested in scope, so go ahead and select that. It narrows down to all the scope projects available. We will be doing the YT scope project. Now down here, we can give our project a name. This is the default name. Uh, we'll leave it as this. And it's going to save it into the My Project folder. I'm OK with that. Let's say OK. And it appended the measurement project to our existing solution. So if I collapse everything, we can see our TwinCAD project lives under the same solution. And the measurement project adds on to the TwinCAD project. So let's focus on the TwinCAD project. It gives us one chart and an axis group. Now you can add multiple charts and multiple axes under those various charts. All the variables that we need to link from the PLC must be added to the data pool. And from there, we get assigned to the various axes. So I'm going to show you various ways of uh, adding the uh, PLC variables. So I want to add some variables to this axis. So let's right click and open the target browser. Navigate down to our PLC project. Remember the first PLC in the PLC node is at port 851. And here you can see our PLC variables. I have created a POU called motion control. We did this in the last tutorial. So from here, I am interested in adding these three bits. So I'll show you the various ways of adding these bits. Let's do one by one. So I'm going to add the enable bit first. So we just hold this, drag and drop. And that brings the enable bit to that axis. For these two bits, you can select them together, right click, add to scope. And that adds them as well. Now I'm interested in adding the velocity and position uh, variables, but I don't want to add them to this axis because this axis represents all the true and false states of these bits. So I'm going to add new axes. So right click on the chart and say new axis, and it creates another axis. Here I'm going to add the velocity. This is the set point, and my feedback position is here, actual velocity. So we can hold down the control key on the keyboard and select the two and drag and drop them here. Similarly, I'm going to add one more axis. And I'm going to do position and actual position. Next, I want to be able to rename my axes um, to something that's more intuitive and clear. So let's go ahead and close this. Right click on the axis, rename. I'll call this bool, since these are all Boolean variables. Similarly, I'm going to go ahead and rename these two axes. Now, as you can see, the three axes are visible on our chart, um, but it's not clear which axis is which. So let's go to the properties, right click and properties. I'm going to pin this down. And as you can see, it's showing the properties of that axis that I've selected. If I selected the YT chart, this changes and reflects the properties of the chart. If I go down to the variable level, now it's showing for that individual variable. So at the moment, let's go back to the axis. We want to change the uh, name of the axis group. So navigate to Y axis and show title. So currently it's hidden. We can say name of the axis group. Similarly, let's rename the other two axes. So for that, I can select both by holding down the control key. Now, all the controls for the chart will be in this area when, when the recording has started. Also, make sure on the toolbar you have the scope controls enabled. Mine scope control is here. If you don't see this, right click. Make sure this is selected. This allows you to start recording. So now it's recording all the variables. And this one stops the recording. So let's open the visualization. 
I'm going to put the scope side by side. Let's go ahead and start recording. So let's give it some position. I, let's say I want it to go to position five. And as you can see, my set point has changed to five. And the velocity set point is here. It's set to 100 because that's why I've set the speed to 100. Let's enable our motor. Let's change the position again, set to 10. Let's try a bigger jump, 50. Let's stop and analyze the chart. So we can either completely stop the chart or we can pause it. So select the chart and the stop button appears, we can stop it. Now you have various tools for panning and zooming. Uh, this is the X pan, this is the XY pan, this is the X zoom, and this is the XY zoom. If you want to display the entire recording, click on zoom out max. And this was the entire recording from start to finish. If you're interested in a particular section of the chart, we can select this area and we'll zoom into that section. Um, if you're interested in panning it, we can use this tool to pan. I'm more interested to see what happened during this transition. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. We can see our motor speeds up, which changes the position from 10. And once the motor position reaches a certain threshold, the speed reduces down to zero once it's reached the set point position. Now, there are some interesting tools we have created in the PLC uh, to allow for some sinusoidal motion. So let's play with that. I have a sinusoid generator here, and I'm going to link that to the speed set point. Now you can see my speed is oscillating sinusoidally. Let's do velocity control. and start the scope. So you should see our set point oscillating, which is this one, but the actual velocity, it's still at zero. Now I'm not interested in the position at this point, so we can right click and disable the position axis. So it removes the position axis as well as all the position related variables. Let's go ahead and enable. Here I can pause the scope. So this green box here is because of the enable bit. This is the region in which the drive was actually enabled. So the actual motion started when once the drive was enabled. So let's zoom into that section. Actually, there's interesting transition happening right here the actual velocity was zero. Up after the enable happened, we can see the actual velocity catches up to the set point. And from there on, it follows the set point. Now, if you zoom in using the XY far enough into it, you can actually see it's not exactly the set point, but it's trying to catch up to the set point. That's because of a low acceleration, probably. Now, if you want to zoom using the XY, uh, we can follow the curves. If you want to see the entire scope, um, there is an overview section. So we can turn this on. And this shows the entire scope in this section here. So once you stop it, it fills the entire region because my start and stop are defined. We can, we can select which region we would like to view.
And lastly, I want to show how to export the data. So select your scope, go to scope menu. There's an option for export. This brings up the scope wizard. There are various formats to choose from. Uh, for this presentation, I'll do CSV. You can select which channels you want to include in your export file. So I'm going to exclude all and then just select the ones that I'm interested in. So for now, I'll select the speed axis, which will automatically include all the variables in that axis. And I'll also select the enable bit. Next, let's select the time period. You can either drag and drop, or you can type the start and end time. So we can select the start time, and we can say, I want one minute from that time. So click Next. Here are the properties for the CSV export options. All looks good to me. Next. My CSV separator, I would like the comma. Decimal mark is a point. Full header. Actually, let's do name only. Next. And where would you like to save? Desktop is fine. The name of the file will be scopeproject.csv. Let's go ahead and create. Here's my file. It's 4.84 MB. We can open this in Notepad. And there's our export file. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Coming up in the next tutorial, we'll be stepping away from Twincat and the programming environment and instead explore some of Beckhoff's I.O. product offerings. Specifically, let's explore Beckhoff's Ethercat I.O. terminals and more specifically, analog and digital DIN mounted modules. We will review the various I.O. product offerings from Beckhoff and see how to use the website resources to find the right terminal for our application. That's all for today's video. Scope is a very powerful tool and we have only scratched the surface in today's tutorial. Since the purpose of this video is to introduce measurement scope project and some of its features, it should help new Twincat users get started with using scope in their own PLC projects. We will do a more detailed tutorial in the future and cover some of the more advanced features of Twincat scope, like XY charts, digital charts, export options, trigger control storage, etc. Post your questions and future tutorial requests in the comments. If you found this, um, video helpful, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future tutorials. As always, thank you for watching and keep innovating.